Hello everyone. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about the Danganronpa creator, um, Kazutaka Kodaka, talking about why he left Spike Chunsoft, where he made the Danganronpa games, um, to form his new company called Two Kaio Games. Not Tokyo, Two Kaio. Um, and he's also there with the Zero Escape series creator. Um, so he recently did an interview uh, talking about you know what happened because uh, Danganronpa ended up being very successful. It was actually Spike Chunsoft's like most profitable original thing they had, and you know he was in charge and it got pretty good acclaim for a visual novel. It's one of the ones that you know hit the most outside of Japan, and some people were wondering about it. Now, I won't say anything or spoil anything, but or spoil anything. But if you had played the trilogy, I would say by the around the V3, Danganronpa V3, you kind of could tell maybe he wanted to move on to something else by the storyline, but we won't get into that. And I said, let's look at what he had to say about leaving the company. So, um, first off, he said, half-jokingly said, apparently, this is, um, of course, translated, said that even after all this time since forming his own independent studio, he and the others are still quite unsure why they felt the need to perform two Kaio games. However, he says firmly that it wasn't due to dissatisfaction with Spike Chunsoft, or feeling a need to compete with them. In fact, Kodaka states that in their current position, and with the content they want to make, they can't win. What he means is that no matter how successful they get, they will never be a big company like Side Games, Level 5, etc. Um, so again, you know, like he knows, starting his own studio, they're, they're, you know, you're not going to reach the status as like developers that have either made it big with mobile, and now they're branching off into console like Sai Games or Level 5 who's been making, you know, stuff for so long, um, you know they're, they've they only got a certain amount of reach as their current form that said, perhaps it's because of this positioning that he decided to go independent as part of a company working with publishers there's outside pressure to make a hit and he felt that more and more while working on the Danganronpa series in Kodaka's case, it wasn't the pressure of being promoted to managerial work but the increasing pressure to produce results as a creator so he says it's not, you know, oh, the company expects more and more out of them, but basically fans do. You know, they they become more attached to certain IPs. Again, with him being, you know, the Danganronpa creator and, like, the writer. Um, he didn't have, like, a lot of people write for him. He did the writing himself. It's his story. People, get, you know, get more uh, sensitive and connected to something that goes on. So there's more likely to have people be upset based off the way certain things go. And V3 was an example that a lot of people... I saw some reviews that called it genius, and some people were really upset at that game um, for certain decisions. Like I said, won't go into it, but um, it kind of makes sense that you know a lot of people want to do that, want to get away from a thing that they know has a lot of expectations already built in. After a certain point, Kodaka felt the need to create something he would find interesting from the bottom of his heart. In the world of game creators, no matter the working environment, your next work failing could very well mean the end of the line. Kodaka felt that since that was the case, he may as well try to do it freely in the way he wants it to be made. Finally, Kodaka said he likes the current positioning of two Kaio games as an A to double A game developer, as they are able to control what they want to do next, even if a game sells well enough to spark demand for a sequel. Back at Spike Chunsoft, Kodaka felt that Danganronpa didn't feel like his brainchild anymore, and with the IP being owned by the company, things like making goods and IP spin-offs such as pachinko machines and the like, would happen without his knowledge. He wanted to be able to take responsibility for his own work in this regard. Now that's a really interesting comment. Um, and that's, again, that kind of adds up to it. Like he's saying responsibility for a sequel. Um, even if it sells well enough, there's this pressure to make another one. And without being in charge, you can't, it's hard to say, no, I don't want to do that. Um, again, that's another example I mentioned in the Dying Ropa series where maybe you could kind of feel as it you know, moved on, he didn't necessarily want to just do Danganronpa over and over. Um, and there's pressure when it's your best-selling thing, there's a lot of fans, there's pressure to just keep making that over and over. Um, so he wanted to do something else, and he didn't feel like he was in control of it anymore, and things, like you said, like Pachingo machines and stuff, he doesn't know if he wants, you know, maybe he has certain IPs, he doesn't like the idea of selling out, let's say, perhaps. He feels, you know, things go a little too far, so he wanted uh, control over that. So that's interesting. Again, it's all those answers and stuff really line up with 
like I said, what you can kind of feel as you know when he left and based off of the end of Danganronpa for people that know. Um, and just um, quick comments on Danganronpa, the reason why I'm making this video, because I always like to do stuff, um, do videos on topics I'm interested in. I did really love the core Danganronpa trilogy a lot. Um, it wasn't something initially when it first came out I thought I'd be interested in. Like visual novels were not something I really ever played. Um, but I liked the first one. I thought it was a solid murder mystery. And then, but I wasn't committed to like playing the rest of them. And then when I finally talked myself into playing Danganronpa 2, like well after it came out, like a year, maybe two years after it came out, I ended up uh, loving it. Uh, actually, it was longer. I, I didn't play it till the, like January this year, and then I immediately jumped in V3. Um, but I ended up really liking the world and like the overall story of those games a lot. Um, and I really would like to see the what they are doing next at Two Kaio Games because you have him and the Zero Escape writer and creator. Uh, plus, I would be interested to see if Spike Chunsoft will have a different director and writer take over Danganronpa and try to do something different themselves. I would really hope that happens. But anyways, um, I also wanted to talk about this beyond what we just said because his company, Two Kaio Games, does have other projects and actually four different things they're doing right now and i really wanted to talk about uh, what they have in the works because that has been known and announced a while ago but uh we haven't really uh, ever discussed it on here and since we're talking about how he's feeling about the studio I figure we should get into that so they have four current projects in the works for people that do not know um one is an anime and there's three games um, I will put um, the artwork they've released of like each of them up on the screen when I talk about them. So the first project, um, as you can see on screen, is a, has a scenario being written by Danganronpa the series creator and founder Kazutaka Kodaka, who we've discussed, and the Zero Escape writer and creator Kotaro Uchikoshi, and they're calling it Extreme Cross Despair. So again, this if so you can see by the art and by that little description right there. This is straight up a a crossover style game. You know, it's not using either of those IPs, of course, but it is straight up going to be a mix between Danganronpa and Zero Escape, and that is really exciting for anybody that likes those style of games. I think that's really interesting. And art-wise, they do have the person who did all the art for Danganronpa working at this company, so like it looks like Danganronpa. That is when I see that artwork, like. I'm not someone, honestly, that's watched that much anime in my life, despite me liking certain games with anime styles. I've seen maybe five animes in my life, and that was two of them are like, or three of them are like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Dragon Ball Z growing up as a kid. Um, but when I see art like that, like it screams Danganronpa to me and really makes me want to play the game. So that is the one I'm most excited for. That one I think is a little further off, though, than a couple of the other ones, at least by the rumors. So next... You can see the artwork on screen. Um, it was an anime. This is an anime that is being written by Kazutaka Kodaka. Uh, I don't really know anything about this. Um, it's just an anime he is doing, and he is writing himself. Again, because I like the stories so much that he writes, this is an anime I actually would be very interested in seeing or given a shot to at least. The other one, this third one here, which you can see on screen, um, I I thought I remember hearing that this was the one like it's probably going to come out first, like it's the furthest along. Um, there might have been an update on this at some point, but I'm not sure because there's no title given or anything, so I can't really look it up. I'm not sure. But I believe this game's the furthest along, and he they described it as a death game of children by children for children. Um, now, you can look at the art, and I'll say it right now, I don't like the art style. Uh, the idea of, you know, the death game concept I obviously have liked in stories because it is used in Danganronpa. Um, and it is also used in Zero Escape. So I do like that style of story plot and the way these games are made, but that art style really doesn't appeal to me. And I believe what I've, I think this game might have more of an action or some platforming segments, which I don't know. We'll see how good they are at those because uh, a lot of those extra things in Dagon Rope and stuff weren't amazing gameplay wise. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, two Kyo games can do though. Um, and finally, the fourth project is actually a crossover with Spike Chunsoft. Um, so I'm really interested in this one. 
Um, it is called a dark fantasy mystery. And like I said, it is a combination. And it is being called a reasoning adventure game with a world in the style of Tim Burton. So reasoning, I sure assume it's like detective. Like you gotta, you know, deduct deductive reasoning, figure things out, um, which again, kind of flows in with how you put Dagger up and all that too. Um, but I guess it's maybe, maybe it has some more gamey elements. I'm not sure. Um, it also has a lot of other Dagnarpa series staff involved in it. So that one I'm really interested in because it has um, core Spike Chunsoft development team that's worked on Dagnarpa um, and people from Tukayo, who obviously are a company that is run by the creator of Dagnarpa. And they're making, you know, like I said, a Tim Burton-esque style game with mystery. Like that is definitely one that I'm really interested in. So out of all the stuff they're working on, I actually kind of am interested in everything. But the the one with the more young looking art style uh, has me the most iffy on it. Um, he also back then was asked about the Dying Rumpa series and what will happen to it when he left. Um, and he said it would be nice to return to it, uh, but they got a lot of stuff in front of us and he's not really sure. Um, again, I think if Dying Rumpa continues under somebody else, it's Spike Chunsoft uses that as a money maker i kind of think it will continue just or maybe it'll be rebooted completely because the storyline isn't something they'll want to pick up from with him with the creator gone um but have someone else do it like he was asked about you know would you re would you do it and i don't think he will end up doing dagon rope again and if he did be so long from now i think i think spike chun's off got someone else to do it if you would do it in a faster rate but anyways that is uh what we have here um, again, I I really liked the Danganronpa trilogy a lot. It was definitely after playing once I got into Danganronpa two, I really got invested in that storyline, um, and I really really want to see what they're doing. Like this is definitely uh, a studio I'm very interested in. And while some people might think, well, if they're in, he's calling themselves an A to double A, like indie to double A size studio, does that mean like you know, in Japan, does that mean like we'll never see these games outside of Japan? And when the, this company was first announced, he actually said they want to make worldwide games. So there's a focus on him, it seems like, of getting games localized and trying to sell outside of Japan because Danganronpa, like I said, ended up doing better um, once it reached outside of Japan. Uh, a lot of series are doing that now. Um, I remember Yakuza with Yakuza 6, I'm even saying, it was the first time the series sold better outside of Japan or reached just as many sales. Um, so a lot of these franchises that even if they're very Japanese, they really need to start doing better outside of Japan now because console, you know, game sales aren't as extreme as they were before. You know, they don't do quite as well as they did, you know, 15 years ago. Um, you could actually see my top 15 game sales in Japan list. And, you know, uh, I don't think until fourth place did any game hit a million, which is, you know, decent. Those are good sales, but... Uh, obviously outside of Japan things can go do way bigger um, so yeah really interesting like I said uh, definitely a Danganronpa fan and interesting to hear his thoughts about leaving and they're kind of what you'd assume like it basically sounded like he was done working on Danganronpa didn't want to be forced to make sequel after sequel after sequel and left um, but I'm really interested in their current projects especially like I said the crossover project between the Danganronpa creator and the Zero Escape creator that is one that looks really good um, I can't wait to actually see that in action. Same thing with the Spike Chunsoft collaboration. Um, but yeah, so uh, thank you guys for listening. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts uh, on what you'd like to see from them, are you interested in Danganronpa? Do you want more videos on you know this company and this type of subject? Let me know. Give me your thoughts. So thank you guys, and we'll see you next time.